Snape killed Dumbledore. <laughs> a great way to start us off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's, no, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, that works. Um, if people don't know that by now. Uh, yeah, it's kind of well within. And that's another thing that's weird about, like, spoilers is the fact that it's, it's hey, here's the, here's the, De- uh, here's the uh, best before date for this spoiler. Yeah. Sort of thing. Did you say that it, it spoils? Stop. Gonna... If it's going to be just that. <laughs> I'm going to fucking spoil your life. <laughs> Actually, Zach, if you can come up with good with spoiled chainsaw. puns, I'll be okay with no, that. No, 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 no. It's no, just that's... how terrible that pun was. It upsets me. I was I was just going for the one. Okay, fine. You're just um, saying about how it's ruined. Something spoiled, spoiled milk. And... <laughs> Spo- something something you don't cry over spoiled milk spilled milk uh, oh, yeah. someone oh my s- god is there a spider behind legs being pants. there's eight legs being pants no no no, no. <laughs> oh I didn't even know there was a spider behind you I went. I made that sound oh my god I thought oh it's in the thing now you bastard <laughs> he's home now he's bro. gone Brody so Brody got up to kill a spider. I'm narrating right, <laughs> and he kills the spider. The spider's dead, and he's now You're in my home. <laughs> he's now crumpled up the tissue with the spider corpse. Luckily, it's already snowing, and it's cold enough so it's not raining. Thank you. This has been a nature moment with the satellite commanders. Your phone's in the couch. Inside the couch. God, this, what a great, what a great wreck to a potentially good start. <laughs> it's all being included. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so yeah, it's like they have they have a shelf life, which is strange to me too. Like, yeah, I get it too. Though it's like you don't want to keep being quiet about Darth Vader being Luke Skywalker's father because you just assume most people know it, but you do meet everyone, meet people every day who don't know that fact. Because it just doesn't matter to them. Yeah. Right? Well, that's the thing, though. But if, like, people don't know that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father right now, they probably couldn't care less. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. If they don't know it by now, then. But that being said, like, I'm sure there's stuff that is old enough that uh, that I haven't seen that I don't want spoiled for me. Mm-hmm. Like, like, if I ever really got into Dallas... <laughs> when I really there's well, there's the who shot uh <laughs> what's his name? What's the character's name? The 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 one they did the You went to Dallas? We're not for gonna this? know anything about Dallas. Dude. No, but but it's the it's the cause it, cause the Simpsons joke, right? Like oh, Who Shot Mr. Burns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was yeah, it was yeah. a, it's an old show that I thought of and it had this it well the Dallas there's, like there's this episode it, right? was one of the biggest one of the biggest televised episodes mm, ever. Okay, that's right. Sort of thing. So that's why I went to it. Whereas Whereas I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a little like upset if I found that out, but hopefully, and this is my big thing with spoiler culture is that the spoiler cannot be the only content that is getting you to like what is being spoiled can't be the only thing that's getting you to watch it. Right. Like you're not there for the twist. You shouldn't be there for the twist. Unless you're watching an M. Night Shyamalan movie. So do you want to tell me what spoiler culture is real quick? (laughs) Do you, do you want me to, well, so we're right now we're at a moment when our conversation about media has never been more saturated. Like we everyone is talking about it. Everyone's yeah. interacting with it on a daily basis. You're on Facebook, you're on Twitter, you're saying there's, this thing. There's so many open forums for it. You're mm-hmm. reacting live to what you're seeing. Like mm-hmm. those people yeah. who are still watching cable are like, Oh my God, did you see that the flash mm-hmm. is wearing a new helmet? Mm-hmm. Like, is he, I, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think so. Um, fucking spoiled. Don't yeah. need to watch the flash. Don't need anymore. to watch the flash now. He's yeah. wearing a new helmet. <laughs> where, where it's like, and then because of all this, a lot of things that they're getting people to watch, ways people are watching stuff now is like, oh, we need to get people on the big hooks. Like, mm-hmm. right. like what is Game of Thrones is the one that everyone goes to. Yeah, everyone goes to it because you have the novels mm-hmm. and you have the show. And the show is very much done in a way where it's like something big has to happen every episode. Now, mm. that's not entirely true because you get those episodes that are that are these big epic battles and the one episodes between them just don't happen. So, nothing. yeah, with Game of Thrones, it's usually there's there's a really big mid-season episode where something big happens and the, and the last two episodes, there's usually something really big yeah. that so happens in those ones. Just and, and in the... Uh, first episode of the season two yeah so there's usually like four sorry sorry. there's usually like four big events that happen within a season of game of thrones 
and then within it's sort of just moving towards those events so in just the other to, episodes just to narrow down uh the definition so spoiler culture is like we want to talk about the shows but also also can't talk about we're it so rabid, yeah. we're so rabidly against things like surprises being spoiled for mm-hmm. us yes that it becomes very antagonizing mm-hmm. and and there's nothing wrong with being like hey i kind of just want to experience this uh by myself sort right. of thing but if that's the case, why are you watching, like, why are you on Reddit, the subreddit for Game of Thrones after having not seen wanna, the, yeah, the yeah, most yeah, recent yeah, episode? Yeah, yeah. Because that's where people want to go to talk to, about to these things. To go discuss it, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Spe- like, yeah. Speaking of that, what's the deal with people who get satisfaction out of ruining things for people? That's Sadists. just assholes. They're, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like... It's literally just assholes. Like, yeah. when Star it, Wars came out... Yeah, well, and you we went people, on Media Blackout, right? Yeah, because, we, yeah. Which, which was... The first time I've ever done full media blackout, I watched the first two trailers yeah. and then yeah, just I avoided think the yeah, rest. I got. And it's didn't you so it was the most tiring. exhausting thing. It's yeah. the most exhausting thing ever. And I'm well, finished it's... watching it and I'm like, you know, I probably would have had just a great a time if I knew that certain characters were doing certain things that I would yeah. have seen yeah. in the trailers. And I think a lot of the big, like, I don't want to say twists, but big events that happen in Star Wars they did a very good job of not letting any any of that slip until the film actually came out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like any if we hadn't gone media blackout, we would have learned a lot about the film, but not a ton about like what was actually happening mm-hmm. in the world at the time and events that happened yeah. or happened, which is good. I think Star Wars did a really good job with their marketing and we just went above and beyond. Yeah, I think a lot of people that. did cuz they expected it to be like because we're at a point now where you watch a trailer for a blockbuster and you know the entire thing inside and out. Batman v Superman, there we go. I was Dawn just about to go of Justice. So, yeah, it's, the most ridiculous thing about that is not only do we know basically the entire plot of that film, like they seriously condensed the two and a half hours it's going to be into two and a half minutes. We also know what's going to happen in the sequels. Yeah. Because yeah. we know we know Darkseid is coming out after that. Because no. like, uh, shut up. If yeah. you didn't know that. We, <laughs> Sorry. And it shouldn't matter because no matter what, it's not going to be an impressively it's, made film. It's, it, <laughs> I'm just yeah, going to say that. Yeah. It's, we, we're so, very opinionated on the negative side of that series. And, but knowing knowing that Darkseid is going to be in the next film shouldn't be a big deal. Oh, it shouldn't. And your twists and your reveals don't... don't if you manage to keep your twists and reveals like secret... It doesn't make what you made a good film. Yeah. Like the one I always go back to, and I and I've talked about this because I teach um, uh, kids in, in a film in the summer, mm-hmm. and I go back to it a lot because they're like kids are especially like oh spoiler culture sort of thing. Yeah. Um, not all of, not all of them, but it's it it is a part of like what makes them they're they're engaging with they're starting to engage with media in a new way Mm -hmm. uh, especially around preteens to teenagers so media culture does actually become a good uh sorry spoiler culture does become a good aspect of what like how they interact with stuff but i keep talking to them about psycho to me is the perfect example of you don't want the twist ruined for you. Alfred yeah. Hitchcock didn't want the twist ruined for you. He yeah. asked, he had, they had little cutouts of him that spoke to people in line. Like it was like little, <laughs> uh, it had like spoke to people in line saying, please don't ruin this for others. Uh, they didn't let people into the movie after it started. Wow. Um, wow. And yeah, so it was in, it was like this whole, there was this culture of like, I want to keep this under wrap sort of thing. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, Alfred Hitchcock wasn't working with the same sort of media blitz that yeah. we are dealing with yeah. on a daily basis. I think he would have dealt with that. I think he would have changed. Well, here's the thing: Psycho, with- even if you have it ruined for you, and I'm not, I'm actively not saying what the big twist is in yeah. case someone hasn't seen the seventy year old, this sixty. It doesn't matter. Uh, this How old is. very old film. <laughs> this movie that is decades old and doesn't know the big twist to it. Or a number of twists to it. Yeah, I know what happens to in that movie every single time. Mm-hmm. I don't get bored it. because no, it's, it's incredible exciting. storytelling. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. incredible storytelling, and that's the issue I'm having a lot right now. Is that people are banking too much on oh everyone's going to get up in arms about this character dying that I don't have to write these other characters. I don't yeah. even have to write compelling characters. Well, that, that's that's my big problem. You do talk, you talked about Game of Thrones already. 
Um, and I've always been of the camp of, I, I love George R. R. Martin. I think he's taking on this massive undertaking that is uh, quite impressive from a literary point of view because mm-hmm. he is juggling a lot of plot lines. But yeah. here's the thing. It's not as great as everyone says because he makes up for him dropping plot lines and just forgetting about other hooks by just, you know, giving a big twist. It's just, it's, I don't know. I, I it's a, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors, but not in a fun way. And it's hiding just not poor storytelling, but like it's, it makes it seem a lot greater than it actually is. It's, it's banking on shock factor. Yeah. Yeah. And like shock. Value and at this point. I, I don't think that's really George R. R. Martin's fault. I think that's the show really is really, they, really guilty of they, that. They do push their deaths to be this huge event. Yeah. And it's like, you can't even, you can't even call them like shocking twists and moments because it's every single time. It's just, Oh, another yeah. character is dead. Well, like, and that was, that was his thing too. When he started, uh, a song of ice and fire he's just like no one is safe because this is a dangerous world it's not yeah. going to be a shock when they die they're just going to die because they played the game wrong yeah and now it's just like you won't believe which main character dies now it's just kind of like it's counterintuitive just... to the kind of the war zone he's created where it's it's when people die it shouldn't be like this big dramatic thing it should mm. almost be like a quick little wisp of smoke yeah and the audience is kind of left with this uneasy feeling of like, oh my god i can't that believe that person's dead now what you... it's, he he nailed that with ned stark's death and then yeah. nothing has been as like poignant Wait, ned or stark lasting. Dies? i don't i don't think i don't think we can really i was waiting for blame. one of us to do that <laughs> i don't think we can really put the blame on george R. R. martin though because a lot of the uh the shock value of the deaths mm-hmm. in the series comes from fan reactions fan reactions like the the ability we've mm-hmm. we've talked about this uh the ability to react so immediately after it happens Mm -hmm. and the fact that it's being televised. It's, it's sort of in this Hollywood esque Mm -hmm. uh, scenario now. And it sort of has to become a big, big deal because that's what television is. It's, it's a series of big events. It's the Super Bowl. It's the Oscars, the Grammys, the fucking Emmys The I don't, I don't watch golden globes. Well, (laughs) the, the (laughs) teen choice awards, the VMAs, (laughs) It's television is based on events. So when you have a TV series that doesn't cash into that, it's mm-hmm. almost not even a television series anymore because that's, yeah. that's not what te- television is. Television can't be, it can't be quiet and slow. It's mm-hmm. gotta be always ramping up to the next big thing. But even like, uh, it's yeah. George R. R. Martin's definitely not all to blame, but even then like the red wedding happens in the books. Yeah. Happens a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, but the Red Wedding happens, and it's supposed to be... It, it It's definitely supposed to be a cataclysmic event, but at the same time, it's supposed to be a byproduct of war and espionage. Yeah. And it just... Even in the books, it becomes just this cataclysmic event that, like, everyone's just like, oh, everything is wrong now. And, like, it just kind of focuses on that for a little bit too long, where Blair's like, it should be just a byproduct of war. We should be moving well, forward and trying don't to... Don't forget that... Uh... Are, are we going to dance around the Red Wedding as well? Are we going to not talk about what actually happens in it? What? I'm sorry. Uh, just... I okay. don't know. Honestly, nah. if you're listening to this podcast and you... Well, no, I don't want to do that. So, so... Fuck. No, this is a spoiler podcast. Your fucking it's... favorites die. Yeah. Let's so, talk about it. Uh, yeah. There will be a disclaimer. I'm going to make sure there's a disclaimer. So... Rob Stark, yeah. who is the biggest, the it's the biggest deal that he mm-hmm. gets killed during the Red Wedding. You, you can't forget he was the golden boy mm-hmm. of the North. Mm-hmm. It's it's. I'm glad they spent a lot of time mm-hmm. reeling from his death because he was almost the North's last hope. Yeah, essentially. Um, yeah. In in uh in the series, definitely in the books. Yeah, I I've only read yeah. half of the first book. So in the that's... books, he's definitely more along the lines of a figurehead. But Catelyn also dies, and that's the real important thing, because Catelyn the, is the puppet master yeah. who right. is controlling everything. Right. Yeah, because Rob in the book doesn't even has his, have his own chapters, if I'm correct. No, he, um, he, does, he does, but they're few and far beti- yeah. between. Right. It's mostly most, Catelyn. Most of his, his storyline is viewed through Catelyn. Yeah, Rob, uh, Rob gets his story, his chapters to develop his love interest. I think that's about it. Oh, ah, okay. And most of his achievements are spoken through other characters and hearsay which, yeah. which is right. a cool thing about yeah. it because like he's built up like this but when in reality 
he wasn't as big of a deal in the North. He was the king of the North, but it was literally just a bunch of banners rallying under him because of his father, not because of him. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's part yeah. of what makes him the golden boy. People yeah. look at him and sort of put him on that pedestal, yeah. right? So when he when he falls, the North has mm-hmm. fallen, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then, like, people... And this isn't really on George R. R. Martin because he moved on, he moved on so quickly from it. When Joffrey died, everyone's like, oh, Joffrey's dead. Oh, finally, that son of a bitch is dead. Yeah. And, uh, but in the books, it's like, oh, he choked. Who done it? <laughs> and then, like, n- next point. It, t- you technically still don't know in the books who who did it. Whereas in the show, it's like, yeah. It, they, they've explicitly said, I was the person that did this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Well, something about, because I've read all the books. I've read all the books. Uh, I'm not caught up in the show, but mm. I read the books before I watched the show. I didn't hate, love it or hate it anymore. Like I was like, Hey, I'm watching this. I've read this. Yeah. They're How do you feel? Different. I don't know. I feel like he just, he, he went shock factor and was like, Whoa. And I know what he was going for. And I think maybe it is the cultural problem, a societal problem and not a, li- uh, not a literary problem. Cause I just felt like he just lost impact as he went on. Uh, with not, the consequence. No, I, I get that. Um, I think they're two different. They're two different monsters. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that's Definitely. the big thing. And I have to say, it has been one of my most. It's been one of the most impressive ad- adaptations I've ever seen mm-hmm. go from novels to television. Now that being said, I haven't watched the Expanse yet, mm-hmm. and I hear that's incredible. I no, am, I haven't I read any of the. the Expanse. I haven't, I haven't read yeah, any of the yeah. novels either. I just either. I've heard so Same, much about it that I want to look into it, but. If, if someone were to come up to me right now and say, hey, here's what happens in the Expanse universe, I would be like, okay, that's cool. Like, mm-hmm. this person dies. All right. Um, I'm going to still see if the content and the characters are, are engaging. And mm-hmm. that's the one thing I keep coming back to is that as long as we're focusing on spoilers, we're not asking for stronger characters. Yeah. Like, like, I got you to watch Better Call Saul. You yeah. think it's incredible, right? Yeah, it's great. I could have like, and I just didn't talk about like, I mm-hmm. didn't talk about parts of it anymore because I wanted you to make, see how the characters mm-hmm. were developing by yourself instead yeah. of knowing, oh, these two characters are going to react this certain way in mm-hmm. a couple like episodes. Yeah. Cause I thought that'd be nice to have, but in no way was I ever worried about like, oh, I'm going to spoil this for him. Cause even if I had said, oh, uh, like even, yeah, I, I can't even think of an example <laughs> right now, but even if I had spoiled something, it would have been, you would have been, okay, that's cool, but mm-hmm. the writing of the characters is still so incredible yeah. Yeah. that you would keep going back to that. I'm and convinced of that. I, th- I think, and that's why and it's a weird comparison to make, but it's a good one. Uh, the difference between Better Call Saul and my problem with Game of Thrones and why I've completely stopped with Game of Thrones reading and watching um, is because Better Call Saul has amazing characters who react off of each other and you grow to learn them and you grow to learn like different facets of them. And the plot points kind of play secondary to how great uh, the storytelling is in Better Call Saul. Yeah. Whereas Game of Thrones is, it's kind of a, it's kind of a drudgery. It's kind of getting to be a slog. Yeah. It's a slog. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. It's a slog. It's just like, holy crap. You're trying to get from plot point A to plot point B and you don't care about what's in between. But there's some, I disagree. There's some great, Mm, okay i still watch <laughs> yeah, it yeah and i can... still love the characters and like i'm still enjoying the i i'm not sitting there ex- like waiting yeah. for them to get from one point to another I'm, yeah i'm enjoying their the characters yeah journey. i guess i i haven't watched past season two of game of thrones i've read up oh to well dance... you're an expert then aren't you <laughs> i've read up to dance with dragons and i'm talking about the books more than anything well you should well, have let us I, know. yeah i'm sorry yeah so i'm sorry you know so, so go back you, you and listen talking, to everything keep... Zach said and know that he's wrong. No. <laughs> know that let's, he's lying to I, you. No. Let's, no, but let's stop talking about Game of Thrones. Is yeah, what no, I'm trying I, to say. I actually think uh, so much has been said about Game of Thrones that, like, yeah. um, I just wanted to use it because it's just an easy thing to jump off of. Sorry but, to make you the villain there, Zach. I'm just like. <laughs> the, well, he did lie to us, Brody. <laughs> I'm used to it. Zach lies to me all the fucking time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's another big one that I it, I don't know whether or not you'll let me talk about. Well, I'm not. I'm. Hey, I'm hey, joking. man. This is. This, I know. I got half. You, you better be careful. Format. I got half. I got that half. Format, man. Like, 
I'm gonna set you up to a lie detector to make the, sure that uh, we're all being honest here. Yeah, uh, but I'm probably gonna <laughs> that was the most dis- di- uh, that was the most like uh, dismissive. Yeah, I've ever given. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Just let just let him finish his point, Zach. Okay. okay? Do you guys want the, me for this one? I'll get all. Like, no, I think you're done. Kevin. I got things to do. So, I think you're done. So, you can go. so the Walking Dead, and this okay. is another one that okay. has a lot of contention uh, and like. But for me, I stopped watching after the second season. But have people on Facebook who do watch it, yeah, and all they have to say is, "Oh my god, that episode!" Oh my god, and I'm thinking. What could have possibly happened with the characters interacting that made someone react so gutturally? Probably someone's arm got ripped off or something instead of it being like, hey, I'm not in love with... Like, like something more, like, Actually, character-based. Um, I, I, I recently found out they're developing characters in a different way in the show than they were in the comic. Oh, yeah, because I, yeah. I read the comics and when they split off, I was like... Yeah. I was like, oh. So, yeah. uh, I was interested in that. Oh, man, I was talking to... Uh, my girlfriend's parent uh dad the other day because he still watches walking dead and i've read the comics and the show is at a great point in the comics and i w- and it was a spoiler that i knew and i was just like haphazardly i was like oh who would they cast for uh for nedge mm-hmm. and uh who's a great one of my favorite villain in that series yeah and he's just like oh this guy and i'm like cool and that's all i said about it <laughs> Uh, because I didn't want to spoil it, but I wanted to talk about it because I wanted to talk about why he's a great villain. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> we want to talk about stuff a lot when we watch it. Do you notice that? I so, think... Sorry. No, sorry. Sorry. No, it's like we just don't have that moment anymore where it's like you watch something and then you just let it digest. Yeah. Like, so sp- this this is this is actually like my biggest point for uh, looking at spoiler culture mm-hmm. is... And this happened with a friend of ours when I was going through Mad Men. <laughs> people, people get so excited to talk about a show because it's so uh, it's so open for discussion at this point, and mm-hmm. it's so easy to discuss something. Mm-hmm. And when when you have this situation with with me and our friend, when I was watching Mad Men, and he had all he was way way ahead of me. He was so excited that I was watching Mad Men. All he wanted to do was talk about it. Mm-hmm. And he spent so much time, he, he spoiled a lot of the show for me and it, it frustrated me because when, when I, when something gets spoiled for me, I, I kind of get stuck on that moment mm-hmm. and I'm sitting here watching the show, uh, expecting it to come yeah. up. And that, and that's one of the biggest things with spoilers for me. It's, it sets up this expectation and I'm sort of just waiting for this moment to happen. But that's the thing is like, people get so excited to talk about shows and, we should we should be able to discuss shows, but at the same time, it's we're at this point where we have to tiptoe around discussions because we don't know where people are in in uh, a show or a game, and it's like you really want to discuss this plot point with somebody, but you can't, mm-hmm. and that's where a lot of like this whole aggressiveness with spoilers comes from. I think. I think it. Yeah, it's. You want to talk about how smart you are, right? When you talk about stuff. Like, listen to us. You just kind of want to show off what you know to a degree. And, or even... I, I don't think it's even that. It's just, it's the excitement of, like, discussing this point in the story. Mm-hmm. It's like, how did you interpret it? This is how mm-hmm. I interpret it. Or how much did you love it? And it's mm-hmm. like, it's it's sort of just the excitement more yeah. than anything. But with, the, with that, like, I think... I, 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 I chalk this whole spoiler culture up to something that is so contemporary, not only because of how we're interacting, but the content we're creating. Nah. Like if I were to say things about uh, the West wing, I don't think it would ruin anything in the West wing. Oh, the part no, where, where president's like, where the president has to stop. Like he's stuck in the war room all, um, all episode because there's this big like clash with, mm-hmm. uh, a downed pilot or something. Mm -hmm. The show itself is never going to lean into because I've told you what happens in the episode and how it ends. The writing is going to be like, Oh, I'm still having a really good time. These people are problem solving. They're Mm -hmm. figuring it out and they're still themselves. Whereas you were talking about having Mad Men spoiled for you, Mm -hmm. which is interesting to me because I've always put Mad Men up there as you can't really spoil Mad Men. No, no, you're right. It's, you're right. It was um the way he would he would 
discuss plot points that I hadn't gotten to yet. And it was like I was saying, I would be sitting there ex- like waiting for those plot points. You'd at that see point. the little yeah. things and, like, and it starts to, to it. deter, not deter, but like uh, cheapen the way I'm watching the show because I'm not be I'm not able to sit there and enjoy it and like not care about what's coming up because I don't know mm-hmm. because I'm sitting there knowing something's going to happen it, and I'm sitting there going, when is this going to happen? Now? Yeah, and it's like, like how are we going to get there? It's like Lane's suicide. You're watching it. You're watching the show and you're trying to enjoy all of it and then yeah. you just see a part and you're just like oh that's gonna add to lane's suicide oh, yeah. oh, exactly. okay is this exactly. gonna lead to lane's suicide oh that's is this the straw that breaks the camel back to lane's yeah, suicide yeah, like yeah. and i'm and i'm not like and it i think right now it's kind of sounding like i'm railing against oh just don't be so sensitive about spoilers right. i get that like uh one of my favorite shows is the sopranos and yeah. what i think is would be great about the sopranos is getting to the points where characters decide to kill each other mm-hmm. based on what's happening rather than you sitting there and going, Oh, that you, as you were saying, mm-hmm. that's going to lead to that sort yeah. of yeah. moment. It's great to have that trend, like he gestured to that me. travel to, well, they knew you said it. I just, <laughs> it wasn't that long ago, Zach, <laughs> you go with the characters to get to that point instead of being like, Oh, here's the, here's mm-hmm. the checkpoint we're going to get to. Let's, let's, yeah. let's play down the clock. Sort and of thing. that's the opposite side yeah. of my argument. There mm-hmm. are a lot of people out there that, really do enjoy media more when they know what's going to happen yeah i've heard of that i don't know who these people are but i i don't either i've heard it too i don't like like you just said it's you can watch it and see like like you were saying with uh lane Mm -hmm. suicide suicide Mm -hmm. you can sit there and watch and see the moments leading up to it and Mm -hmm. go oh that's obviously going to build towards this this big moment so it's it's a different way to watch television i don't really like it that way because i don't I don't love knowing what's going to happen mm-hmm. most of the time. So, uh, Blair, your big, your your biggest uh, peeve, I guess, with this is that it's affecting the content we're, that we're creating. It is, and it's yeah. and shows are turning into plot point A, B, C, not a cohesive line. Yeah, P- people are relying on the shock moment. Yeah, yeah. Now it's more like, so hey, is, we're really going to get people do you, on this. Yeah. Do you view that as? an inferior form of storytelling or just a oversaturated form of storytelling? <laughs> what a question. What do you, sorry, like it is, they're not writing as well. Yeah. Or it's not as well. It's or not everyone as, is because everyone is doing it. Yeah. Is it, yeah. Is it not as good of a storytelling as like, say something like, say like game of Thrones is as good of a story as better call. Saul. well, like you can't lump all of game of Thrones in. like they're yeah, guilty, but they're also not yeah. guilty. Right. Like it's just, let's take a smaller, it's example, easier but, yeah. because they're it's, it's an easier example because a lot of people have seen it. And a lot of spoiler mm-hmm. culture rallies around game of Thrones. Cause mm-hmm. it's like, the second anyone watches it, they want to talk about how these characters died mm-hmm. and the de- beheading was great. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, it shouldn't be one way or the other, I think. I th- I think you're supposed to have these moments. It's a tool, right? Mm-hmm. The shock is a tool, but it's not the only thing you're doing. Like yeah. It's like if you go to the dentist and the dentist is like, oh, all I got to do your dentist stuff, all this mm-hmm. this teeth stuff is this mirror. I'm going to give you a root canal, by the way. <laughs> right? It's, yeah. <laughs> you have to use all stuff in your toolbox, which is the exact same reason. Like, like Alfred Hitchcock was against people ruining mm-hmm. this twist to his movie. But that being said, all things said and done, I just <laughs> just layered those ones on top of each other. Um <laughs> His movie still is incredible. It's an incredible piece of like film. Mm-hmm. Um, most of his movies are around shock and like and surprise, but you can have them ruined for you and still have a great time. That doesn't mean they have to be ruined for you. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you should go out and you should force yourself to be like look into oh these people die so I'm I know what's going to happen. Whatever. So I don't. I don't it's need about, to watch it anymore. Yeah, it's about yeah. creating balance. Yeah. It's about finding balance of. People don't know where you're going to go because ultimately we should be making very, we don't have to make realistic in like the most, the most um, uh, like strict of sense, Mm -hmm. but we need to make content that is causing us to interact with these characters, which is something I was talking about uh, earlier was the idea of like having characters of faith and how those are being shied away from when that's a person, when it's like, if, as long as it's a well-rounded person, their f- faith shouldn't be the only thing that you're like 
tying yourself to. You should be, oh, there's a character of faith. Maybe maybe you are a person like who goes to the church every Sunday, or maybe you're not. Yeah. But that's not the only thing you're spending your time obsessing over. It's there's there's parts of this character that are outside of that. Mm-hmm. So I think to sum it up, it's like we can't constantly be creating content that is like, oh, by the way, you'll never guess who dies in this episode, so everyone tunes in. Sort yeah. of thing. Uh, but you also can't just consistently be like, oh, by the way, you're never going to get a twist because you're going to know exactly where it goes. That's not how life works. Like, life will throw you stuff, and that's what we're looking for. Or at least that's what I'm mm-hmm. looking for in my television and films and games. I'm looking for stuff to come out of nowhere but also make sense. Like, this is how we got here, but also there's a chaotic element to mm-hmm. it. Like, there needs, there needs to be a balance. I think I've said, I've talked long enough. <laughs> I think the summarizing point is there needs to be a balance, and we cannot consistently just be like, ah, look, look at this, look at yeah. that, look at this. Like It's, it's spoiled for me. It's ruined. Yeah. yeah. It's, the reason I ask that is because I, I view a uh, formulaic, like, plot point A, B, C, you won't believe what happens next. Um, to be a form of like watching TV as a puzzle and it's just like the points in between are you building that puzzle as the viewer and then you have the aha moment with the climax well do you hate that? Um, <laughs> is it because I hate puzzles? <laughs> no 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 do, no. I was just getting the impression that you dislike that sort of thing Um, it's I don't dislike it but the way I've always viewed it was it's oversaturated. I think it's I I view it as kind of a way of storytelling where it's just like we're getting, we're going to drop the clues to this major pl- twist mm-hmm. and you as the viewer going back knowing it can go back and understand the clues a little bit better and uh see the see the puzzle and see how we designed the puzzle. Yeah. Which is where going back to you guys not understanding how someone can enjoy it knowing the spoiler. Yeah. Um, oh no, I can understand it. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. I just don't. No, I, I don't get, agree I don't, with it. I don't, yeah. I don't get yeah. like. I don't. I don't I under- enjoy. I understand it. it. It's just not. Yeah. It's no, I, yeah. Yeah. It's just the way. Um, I don't know. I view it as an interactive way of seeing it. Whereas, um, other differently written things like Better Call Saul is just you're you're there for the ride. You're not active. You're not active in the viewing of it. Yeah. Because it's just like this is my story that we're telling. I'm telling, and you're just here to see it. Whereas. Mm-hmm. Something like Walking Dead or Game of Thrones, you get caught up in the culture of the show. Not even, yeah. not even just spoil, spoiler culture, but you are, you become part of this community that's watching the show because you're there's something active to it. Well, yeah, I mean, just think about the amount of viewers those shows have over mm-hmm. Better Call Saul. Anyways, there's yeah. more people talking about it, so there's yeah. just more to talk about. Yeah, well, yeah. But, so sorry. Oh, <laughs> no. Just, just to finish it, it's just like, um, it's how I kind of view. Um, that ex- that aha moment is kind of there's this video game that was recently released called The Witness. Jonathan Blow, have you guys ever played Braid? He's a yep. very artsy game designer, and he built this game. And the way he describes it is it's completely built around an aha moment. So whenever he was asked about it, he's like, "I can't talk about this game." Right. He's like, "I don't want to show you my game," not because like I'm being artsy and secretive. It's just like it. It's he, the aha he, he moment. He wanted you people need, to experience it you themselves. Need, you firsthand. need the moment. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. need to experience that moment. Yeah. Well, yeah. we as you we were talking, it also made me realize that the big things we were talking about were huge serialized television. Mm-hmm. There's a whole side of television and all form like forms of media that is episodic. Like, oh yeah, absolutely. yeah. That we that like, if you know who the killer. It's sometimes if you know who the killer at the end or the disease at the end of house, right? Like, yeah. if you know what the or disease like, at the end it's of house. It's not lupus. You're yeah. watching Criminal Minds or something. Yeah, Criminal like, Minds who's, is who's, great. Who's the killer going to be? It's usually somebody who is, hasn't been introduced into the show until the yeah. last 10 minutes anyways. Well, well, what's incredible about cr- Criminal Minds is that it goes both ways. Like, it'll go, it'll go like, you don't know who the killer is or you're showing the killer within the first 20 seconds Right, and it's like it's about these people putting the clues like, together, figure, yeah, bi- literally building the puzzle, yeah, exactly. like Zach said. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're just watching the characters do it, and you're sitting there as sort of the omnipresent uh, eyes, yeah, above it. Just and saying, I think well, I know who it is. You just got to find them. And mm-hmm. I think what makes really great episodic series is the fact that the travel, like the getting to there, is more engaging than the actual solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the reason I like House is not because he's solving crazy 
this person secret ha- secretly has leprosy mm-hmm. sort of thing. It's the fact that he's being an asshole to people while he's like, <laughs> well, oh, by the way, like the medical stuff comes second. It's yeah. just literally how much can he screw, screw around yeah, with people? Yeah. Like Criminal Minds is great because it's like they're using active, like they're using actual FBI uh, techniques mm-hmm. while also just being a bunch of different characters who are like, mm-hmm. I'll deal with this. You yeah. deal with that. I mm-hmm. like, and like there's a good amount of like, and it's not only about character development, but the character development seeps in while the while the plot's happening. It's it's nice. I like episodic stuff. I really like I, I episodic, episodic lawyer stuff too. <laughs> I have I have a soft spot and for you like hate suits. I hate suits. Dude, suits is so bad. Suits is so suits bad. Is such a bad no, show. So I've told you why I don't like suits though, right? It's yeah. from mostly from the first pi- the pilot from an editing standpoint. I was like, I'm done. I can't do this. <laughs> this breaks my brain. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but like The Good Wife, I really like The Good Wife. Or the first three seasons I watched.